in this video, I'm just going to prove this simple claim, which we used before. Uh, this is really something you should be able to do by yourself. It's in fact, you should probably pause right now and try driving this yourself and only watch the rest if you're not able to complete it because it's a good refresher on how to do uh, derivative computations and gradient computations. But without further ado, let's um, see how to do this. Like the way we do this is just by using, first of all, the fact that the derivative or the gradient is linear. So we're going to split this up uh, and do each term independently. So this is just going to be the x transpose the x plus gradient of x transpose b plus gradient of c. And we'll do these in reverse order because these are, these are simpler at the end. So gradient of c, c is going to be a constant. The derivative of any constant function is just going to be a constant. So if you take the uh, derivative element wise, it's still going to be a constant and it's going to be uh, taking a derivative of a constant is going to be zero. So we're going to have the zero, the zero vector here. Um, now here, the next one is a little bit uh, trickier, but not too bad. So we want to compute gradient of, uh, I, I guess maybe uh, b transpose x might be the more common way to see it. Yeah, let's write it as b transpose x, in fact, because that's kind of more convenient, uh, or it's the way at least I think about it more. So let's write this and try to find, uh, let's, let's write what b transpose x is. This is equal to, it's just an inner product, right? So it's going to be sum of b i x i, where i equals one to d. Now with that in place, we can easily take the partial of this with respect to x i of b transpose x i x. And this is very easy because there's exactly one term which depends on x i, and it's just going to be equal to b i. So this gives us the ith entry of the uh, gradient. So this gives us, if the ith entry of the gradient is going to be equal to bi, then we can see overall that the gradient of b transpose x is going to be equal to just b. And this is kind of natural as well because, uh, you know, if you have, uh, in, in just the univariate setting, if you had a derivative, if you had c times x where c is a constant, or b times x where b is a constant and x is just the variable, then the derivative of that is b. So similarly, the gradient is going to be the vector b. Now, the last part is perhaps the trickiest one, um, and that's going to be the gradient of a, or sorry, x transpose ax. Uh, let's note that we can write this uh, expression, x transpose ax, as the following. It's a summation over all u v of x u x v a u v. And you can just verify that by kind of seeing what this, uh, this, this does. It's not too hard to see. So let's take the uh, partial of this with respect to uh, x i. And we can kind of write this as, uh, okay, let's write this as, Essentially, we're looking at the terms in which x i appears, and that can be the terms in which it appears as the first one, or the ones where it appears as the second one, or the ones that, where it appears as both. So let's just do the one where it appears as both. So that term is where we have uh, x i squared. So the derivative of that is just going to be 2 x i times a i i. And then we essentially just uh, do this, where we're going to have x i being the first one, maybe, or sorry, let me say, say it like this. We, we look for the terms where uh, i is equal to the first one, and then we take the derivative with respect to those, with, with respect to x i for those terms, so that term just disappears. So then we're going to be left with, say, x v uh, times a uh, u, sorry, let me say a i v, where there's a summation here where this is over v does not equal i, and plus the opposite, where we have summation over x u a u i, where u does not equal i. So now, this is nice. Um, one thing to make it a little bit more convenient is the fact that we're missing out uh, on these two things, and we have uh, those two terms are sitting over here. 
So you can also easily write this as summation of uh, i of, sorry, not over i, over all v of x v a i v. Now, without this restriction uh, that can't be equal to i, we just basically swallowed one of these terms and we'll swallow the other one here. Over all u, x u, a u i. Good. Now, let's inspect these terms. Well, we'll notice that this looks very similar to this type of term here. This is just a dot product in particular. Uh, uh, actually, let's do this one. So this is a dot product between the vector uh, a i dot and uh, x. So what do I mean by that? This is the uh, vector which corresponds to the ith row of the matrix. So like, imagine you have the matrix uh, a is equal to a1 dot, and so on, all the way up to ai dot here, and so on. Now, the nice thing to note is that if we had the, uh, if we had, if we were taking the product a times x, well, the ith entry of that is equal to the inner product of a i dot and uh, x. And that's easy to see just by the property of, uh, you know, matrix multiplication. When you picture, you know, you put the x over here, at least is how I visualize matrix multiplication or matrix vector product. So here's x uh, one through xn. And it's essentially each entry is the dot product of the corresponding row in the matrix and the vector itself. So here it's going to be the inner product of uh, a i dot and x. And so that gives us an easy way to represent uh, what this is going to be. This is going to be a, uh, yeah, this is going to be a x and the ith entry. I'm using this notation to mean that you take this uh, matrix vector product and it'll give you a vector and then you just take the ith entry of that. And now similarly, you can do the exact same analysis here except uh, by noting that this term here, this can be equivalently written as the following, uh, summation of u over x u a i u transpose. And now you have it in basically the same form as you did before. So this, this term can be expressed as a transpose x i. So here we see that if we took the partial with respect to x i, then we're going to have the sum of a x and the ith element of that and uh, a transpose x, sorry, I put this inside, the ith element of that. So essentially we can construct the uh, gradient of this element by element by adding up uh, the ith element of a x and a transpose x. So therefore, if you just put that together, uh, we just have that the gradient of x transpose a x is equal to uh, a x plus a transpose x, which is equal to a plus a transpose x. And if you put these, so that's, that's the gradient of this third term. And if you put these three terms together, a plus a transpose x, uh, let's, let's find these three terms. We've got this. And we got this, the gradient of uh, e transpose x is b. And we have this being zero. If you add those three things together, then you get exactly the claim that we made earlier, which concludes the proof.